Okay, so uh, thank you for joining us on this sunny day for the session Manga Culture and Internet Governance, the Fight Against Piracy. Uh, this is Kensaku Fukui, and this session was planned by the Japan Publishers Manga Anti-Piracy Conference, or JPMAC, uh, which was established by five major manga publishing companies and lawyers and which has been working to combat manga piracy. Japanese manga is popular uh, all around the world. It continues to expand with many anime adaptations, uh, game adaptations, uh, character goods, and uh, fan events. Uh, sales have also increased significantly. Many Simul publication apps are making new releases available to the public around the world uh, in English and uh, many other languages. The problem we are facing is the online piracy business, uh, which has rapidly become a huge problem for creators and various creative industries. Uh, so far, there are 1,100 non-active piracy sites for manga only. The top 10 Japanese sites attract 150 million hits per month. This is the number of visits. The three major English language piracy sites attract even larger visits of some 200 million per month. It is estimated that free reading via the internet was uh, 3.6 billion US dollars per year. They are offered by anonymous operators through a combination of various services on the internet. Often, the countries where the hosting servers are located differ from the countries where the operators exist and both tend to be concentrated in countries where the legal pursuit is difficult for political and other reasons. Uh, and uh, the, they are, mm. in addition, uh, they select and use registrars, CDNs, advertising uh, companies or other services uh, that can be easily used anonymously and basically do not remove illegal content when notices are given. For five years, we have been working hard to combat manga piracy and have driven several huge sites to close through legal procedures overseas and the cooperation with Japanese internet and advertising industries. As a result, the number of visits to the Japanese language sites dropped from 4 million uh, per month hits of the worst period. However, new problems have arisen when trying to take countermeasures such as repeated domain hopping where the target site to change domains in a short period of time. And the number of visits does not decrease any further. But unfortunately, rather, the number of sites tend to increase and diversify. Manga is loved around the world, but the problem of piracy sites that impacts manga artists is still not fully recognized internationally. It is impossible to curb the piracy without cooperation and support from the rest of the world. Today's diverse speakers include a legendary manga artist and a researcher known as the father of the Japanese internet a curator who opened a major manga exhibition at the British Museum and broke its record for a youth audience, yeah, youth attendance. 
and an editor who has worked in the manga business for more than 20 years in the United States for the healthy and sustainable development of creative activities and the internet. We would like to gather the wisdom of everyone in the audience and discuss it together. Thank you. So, uh, could you show the... Yes. And by the way, this is today's speaker, Hagio-san's uh, representative work, anyway. Okay. Okay. So the, uh, let me. <laughs> Let's start. Uh, first, we would like to talk about mangas expansion throughout the world in various forms. And among popular manga, One Piece have had over 510 million copies in circulation so far and is on the Guinness World Record. But manga is not accepted only by publication but through various ways, uh, such as anime, games, products, movies, and fan events. Nicole-san, could you share your experience about creation and acceptance of manga overseas, including recent major exhibition at the British Museum? I'd be, I'd be delighted to. And um, I'm very excited to, to, draw, to be here today to, to talk to you about this because it's an incredibly important subject. But first, I will tell you about the British Museum exhibition. Oops, I'm going to sign. Um, as you can see, this is the British Museum, and we have what they call Toblerones, um, the, the Ashiripa from Golden Kamui, the, uh, the introducing. Manga at the British Museum from the very beginning um, when you enter the museum. This was in 2019. I've been reading manga since I was young and I'm passionate about manga. I was a curator at the British Museum for over 15 years. My specialty is actually uh, koge and three dimensional objects, but I love manga. And in 2006, we created permanent Japanese galleries and I put out a manga corner. So we always had manga on display. But the British Museum has been collecting manga since the 1920s with Kitazawa Rakuten and those, and those types of objects. But they didn't display them. They were considered ephemera. What I did at the British Museum was occasionally display manga, for example, in the Asahi Shimbun display area. And in 2015, I displayed Saint Onisang, well, I, Chiba Tetsuya's work, and then um, Hoshino Yukinobu and uh, and Nakamura Hikaru sensei, so three generations. It sounds like an odd combination, but it was fun, it was interesting and in showing different types of manga production. What happened though was 100,000 people came and looked at it, and this took the British Museum by surprise. They assumed that people weren't really interested in manga, but they had to pay attention then. So in about a year or two later, they asked me, well, would you think about making a a large exhibition, and I said, of course. And so I wrote up uh, a proposal, and they put it to marketing research. I think that they believed it wouldn't work. I think that they really were setting me up to fail, as they say in English. But um, it, surprisingly, they put five exhibitions out, um, Samuel Beckett, uh, Roman uh, sculpture, <laughs> a number of different exhibitions, and manga came in as number one. They were actually thinking they weren't going to do it, but then they realized they had to do it. <laughs> so I got the manga exhibition. I was delighted. And it turns out that they gave me the most beautiful space. And this space is right here. It's called the Sainsbury Exhibition Galleries. And on the ground floor, it's huge. And it's right next to where the Rosetta Stone is displayed. This caused a lot of issues within the museum. People felt, should Japan be displayed there? Should manga be displayed there? And there was a lot of debate. 
but happily, it went forward, and it was a huge, resounding success. And I want to explain just a little bit about some of the results for that. Um, but we're giving you a sneak preview of the inside of what it looked like. The top two slides are just without people in it, and then the bottom side, you can see Captain Subasa and with people in it. It was incredibly crowded. The exhibition was sold out. It turns out um, afterwards when they did the analysis that it was the best-selling exhibition, and most importantly, it had the youngest audience that the British Museum has ever had. In addition to that, what was impressive is that it had the most diverse audience. So in, in Britain, they say BAME, B-A-M-E, but it means you know audiences that are not white came. And beyond that, it was also interesting, there were a number of, of certain types of groups, for example, people with autism, were certain types of groups that self-identified that really loved the manga exhibition. So for the British Museum, this was a huge, surprising result. So basically, this summarizes the, the results of the manga exhibition. One thing I really want to point out, though, is that over half the visitors had never paid for an exhibition at the British Museum before. So this broke new ground all around. What the survey at the end found out, though, was that most people identified with emotional outcomes, not intellectual outcomes, but emotional outcomes. This means they identified with the material. The average dwell time was one hour and 33 minutes, which is very long for the British Museum paid exhibition. This is the exhibition layout and, um, and our different zones, but what I just really want to focus on here is that we created a counterclockwise exhibition because in manga, you really have to read it from right to left, and this is fundamentally different from what in Britain, how you read from left to right, and even walking counterclockwise was really problematic for a lot of the designers and for the people um, in the British Museum, but we did it, and I feel we, we, it shows that you can shift people's minds and hearts, and it was a, a huge success. It won the Good Design Prize for 2020. These are just a few of the things that we put in it, and I, I don't have very much time, but I want to just explain a couple more things. We, of course, had the father of modern manga, Tezuka Osamu's sensei's work, but what caused a lot of interest was Princess Knight. Um, the idea of kind of gender fluidity or different types of genders and different types of representations, this was a, a big surprise for many of our audience. We also had really important artists like Chiba Tetsuya sensei, um, come and, and, well, he didn't actually physically come, but he drew uh, a rugby for the World Cup, uh, the Rugby World Cup. He drew a rugby picture for us and represented us, and this really made a big difference, although, interesting enough, his work isn't translated into English, but still it seemed to reach people. But I have to say that the person who made the most difference to me was Hagimoto sensei She's right with us, and she was there for us throughout the exhibition, but she came um, with her editor, who is extraordinary, Furukawa-san, and they gave many talks. They showed us how editors and manga artists work together. And this is a big deal. And something I want to just mention is what I learned from this exhibition is that manga isn't just a manga artist drawing and then it's published. With, it's, the, it's, I'd say, maybe 50%. I'm not quite sure, but it's a lot. Once the manga artist draws, the conversations with the editors, the nemu, the storyboards, the work that the publishing house does, finally the end product. So it's this combination. And with Hagimoto Sensei there, I felt that we could do it, and we did. I want to give one example of Ishizuka Shinichi, Blue Giant Supreme. Maybe some of you know this, but this is with his editor, Katsuki Dai. And during one of their conversations, they showed how they work with name, with these storyboards, and what's in and what's out. But I want to draw your attention to the drawing itself. So this is, um, we have Dai, he's blowing on his saxophone, and you feel this music shower coming in. It's this immersive quality. It's an emotive, immersive quality that manga has that is so incredibly important. And we're coming to the end. I just wanted to say a couple more points. In the middle of the exhibition, we decided to put a manga library, and the re manga bookstore in a way. And the reason we did this was that one manga artist told me, manga is not what you put on the walls, it's what you put in your hands. And that really struck me. And so we put this library in, and first the British Museum said, we're not a library. Please don't put a bookshelf in the middle of the exhibition. 
but it was the most popular part of the exhibition. To have the books out, people could hold them. They said they would steal them. Not one volume was stolen. People would sit and read, even if it's in Japanese, and they knew, knew no Japanese. It was just the way of holding manga in your hands makes a huge difference. The paper quality was brilliant, but Viz was wonderful and gave us free downloads. So we had free downloads available. We had 50 artists, 70 titles. It was a very large exhibition, but um, in the end, just to summarize, manga material is incredible. You can have Buddha and Jesus um, living together in a gap year in Tachikawa drawing manga as a subject. You can have, you can have incredible subjects right here, or one was really popular from web, web manga to uh, paper manga, um, One Punch Man. Um, they, this was incredibly popular uh, at the museum, but I'd really like to mention the, the power of manga and how it, it's not just in the paper, how it comes out into your life. So, for example, we had this fabulous, thanks to Kodansha, Attack on Titan, huge blow up head. It became a major selfie moment for us, but people really identified and it was almost like they had found their tribe, they had found their manga. So manga's power to me is because it can cross boundaries, it can cross, cross borders, it's incredibly important. And these are the many lessons I learned from it. But what I also learned is that for the future of manga, we need to protect it. We need to protect the artists, we need to protect their ability to work with the publishers, and piracy is something that really endangers um, the thriving of the industry. And so this panel is very important. Yeah, Nicole san thank you very much for your impressive uh, the insights. And uh, uh, by the way, the, oh, uh, you can uh, keep the, yes. And, uh, by the way, this is uh, uh, cosplayers or from all over the world. So the, it's uh, other the, uh, interactiveness of the manga and the fans. And uh, Andy san uh, could you share your perspective on the rapid growth of the global manga market from the business side? Of course, I'd love to do that. Um, I'm Andy Nakatani. I'm the senior director of online manga at Viz Media. Uh, prior to that, I was editor in chief of the English language version of Shonen Jump, uh, which in 2012 we released uh, in a digital format, and uh, that the content for that came out simultaneously. Uh, as Japan released chapters, we would release them on the same day. Um, so if we can see the chart. Is, is, the, is the slide visible with the, with the chart? I will assume it is. Um, so this chart represents, uh, is it there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, this chart represents uh, um, manga sales, graphic novel sales in the US in units. Um, the orange part is, uh, represents manga, and the blue is uh, graphic novels that are not manga. So the total of the two is uh, total graphic novel sales. Um, we only have data from 2007 on this chart, so I just wanted to say a couple things about, about before. Um, manga was a very niche market in the US until about 2006, um, when it reached quite a peak. Um, and the main reason that it, it became popular in 2006 was because of uh, the popularity of anime on broadcast cable TV and because of the prevalence of big box bookstores uh, like Borders. Um, following that, around 2011, there was a little bit of a decline. Um, various market factors um, also, Borders uh, started shutting down stores and eventually de declared bankruptcy in, uh, I think it was 2011. Mm -hmm. um, but moving on from there, uh, there was steady growth, mainly because of the popularity of anime uh, in the United States. Um, and then you see this huge spike that's happening around 2019, 2020. Um, and that um, clearly that was because the pandemic happened and people needed entertainment and distraction, and they were staying at home, so they consumed a lot of manga. Um, now, 
I want to emphasize that this is uh, for print sales. Um, and uh, let's see, if we can go to the next slide. Um, and before I talk about, uh, before I talk about the slide with uh, um, the various Simulpub platforms that we have, um, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, piracy. Um, so illegal content of manga, pirate, pirated content, um, there are various factors, like the, the scan, scanlation, scanlation sites, um, and that's kind of like um, a portmanteau of scan and translation. And so a common term is scanlation to refer to the pirate, pirated sites. Um, they release a vast amount of content. It's free and it comes out really fast. Um, and to sort of come up with a strategy to, uh, to combat that, um, there are various official online simulpub manga platforms that are now available in English. Um, official, uh, official platforms from uh, publishers such as Viz Manga, Shonen Jump, Manga Plus, K Manga, Book Walker, Manga Up. Um, most of these are from uh, Japanese publishers who have released content in English. Um, there are various business models for these. Um, various combinations of free content, um, subscription models, microtransactions, points. Um, but the main thing here is that the content is released simultaneous with chapters that come out in Japanese. So the translated content comes out on sa at the same time. Um, and for example, uh, my company puts out Viz Manga and Shonen Jump and we, we uh, put out the first three chapters for free and the, the latest three chapters for free. And to access the chapters in between, uh, you subscribe for a low fee. Um, and so those are just kind of the various models that, that are out there uh, for simultaneous content. Okay. Andy and thank you very much for your uh, insights. And uh, yes, so Hagio san, you are a living legend of the Japanese manga. Oh, and uh, could you share your personal view on the experience as for manga creation and acceptance? Hi. Hagio desu, yoroshiku onegoyoshimasu. あの、え、私が漫画は小学校の頃から読んでいましたけど、あの、それに夢中になったのは、あの、え、意見が学校でも家族でも社会でも大多数を占めていて漫画を読んでると怒られていました。だけど私は手塚さんも読んでその中に一般の社会では学ぶことのできないたくさんのものがそこに詰まってると思いました。それは普通はもっと勉強
uh, so far. Yeah. So. Uh, could mm. I, I just say that what mm. Hagio Sensei, could I just mention that what Hagio Sensei said was so incredibly important. It's how manga brings you into another way of feeling. It's not just reading. It's mm. the immersive quality mm. of manga that's part of its power, and, mm. and she explained that. Thank you very much. I, I totally agree. Okay, so uh, let's Hi. move on to the next part, impact of piracy. So, and from now on, the, you can keep the uh, PowerPoint on every time. So, uh, and uh, it's a bit busy, okay? Uh, currently, uh, there is approximately 1,100 known piracy sites, and among them, uh, approximately 240 sites are piracy sites in original Japanese, and 400 sites are piracy sites with English translation, and approximately 460 sites are piracy sites translated into various non-English other languages. And, uh, and on this slide, you can see the typical Japanese manga piracy site. As you see, on the left hand, uh, you can find almost all popular uh, mangas. And you can just uh, click on uh, any images, then the list of chapters appear uh, on the right hand. And by clicking on a chapter, you can immediately scroll to read the manga vertically in quite high quality. And uh, visit to top 10 piracy sites in original Japanese for August 2023 is, as I said, more than 150 million visits per month. And seven of them are believed to have operators residing in Vietnam by analyzing the disclosed information or other, yeah, informations. And damages caused by the top 10 piracy sites in Japanese is estimated to be approximately 507 billion Japanese yen. It's an estimate uh, by number of site visit multiplied by uh, regular retail price. So uh, there should be some argument about this calculation, but anyway, it's huge. And this is a typical English manga piracy site, but as you see, it's uh, pretty much similar to Japanese ones, except uh, for translated in English. And visits to the top three English manga piracy sites are even bigger than Japanese ones. Uh, here are the, some 200 million visits per month. Andy san, uh, could you share your view on such piracy's impact on manga artists and the industry? Uh, sure. Um, so, First of all, obviously, there's the loss of potential revenue of the manga artists, but uh, uh, maybe even more than that, I feel that piracy uh, devalues the perception of what manga is and devalues all, all that the manga artists put into their work. Um, it kind of fosters a sense of entitlement for people who, uh, who read the pirated content, um, where they come to expect um, they come to expect that they're going to read the content for free and they expect to, to be able to access it as soon as possible. And at times that's even before the official release mm -hmm. of, the, of the Japanese um, content. Thank you very much. Um, Hagio-san, 
はいどうも。Do you have any feelings、uh, はい、about these piracy activities or leaders who read piracy sites?、Uh, if you have any vision or。漫画をこう書いて売ってる方にあの,のこととしてはやっぱり海賊版だとお金が払われないわけですね作家の方には一昔2000年代に、えー、会社で漫画をデジタル化してあのネット配信するって企画が持ち上がってで次々と自分の作品もネットに上がることになりましたけどその時に思ったのがこのようにあの非常にイージーにネット配信されるからには。あの漫画はこれからずっとただ読みされてしまうだろうなっていう懸念でしたところがやっぱり会社とはしっかりしたもんでちゃんと読まれた分だけその後印税が入ってきます新しい作品だけじゃなくて結構古く書いた作品も読まれてあのちゃんと印税が入ってきますそれで生活してまた次の作品を書くことができますですからあのやはり書き手にとってはお金を払ってもらえないということがやっぱり非常に辛いことです辛いというか悲しいことですだからなんとかうんまずユーザーの方にできるだけ海賊版読まないでお支払いしていただきたい<笑>と思いますあ私もネットで漫画を買ったり、頻度で読んだりしていますけど、一応、こちらはただで読みます、こちらは有料ですっていうときには、とりあえず作者さんに敬意を表して、有料の方を選んで、あの<笑>読んでいます、お金のあるときは。ものすごく貧乏だったらどうなるか分かんないけれど、はい。だから、まあ、気持ちの問題、そうしていただけるとありがたい。思いますはい。Thank you very much。Now 村井さん、You are another, another living legend of the internet world。And is this, the, is this the only problem for manga piracy? Or do you think it has broader relation to internet at large? Or, or any other insights? Or? Yeah, okay.、Um, yeah, thank you very much.、Uh, uh, this is Jim Rai, by the way.、Um, the, the known as the、uh, biggest fan of a manga in this country. Right? <laughs> and so, uh, like uh, uh, Hagio sensei,、uh, I've been, I've been you know, kind of grown up with、uh, reading a lot of, lot of, lot of mangas, and then the poor, you don't believe that、uh, how, how I like. Uh, I l o v e the manga、uh, for my life.、Uh, so, Fukui、um, s e n s e i s question、uh, the pilot thing、uh, is、uh, very much a、uh, you know, kind of a digitally internet has been providing the open <coughs> space for exchanging the idea and、uh, uh, many of the things. And uh, so, uh, uh, the, well, the The, I remember this is an IGF forum, by, Internet Governance Forum, by the way. And the, then, you know, so I kind of,、uh, when the very beginning of the Internet、uh, space, then、uh, the first things we encountered are the Internet community、mm. that time in,、uh, uh, it's actually the early 90s.、Uh, the, uh, what, some of the people on the world intellectual property. Came to the internet、uh, space, IETF people, and then、I、started to discuss how the global intellectual property is going to be addressed on the, on the cyberspace, right? The, on the inter internet space. And that was a very much、uh, first experience of mine. I was a representative from IETF, and then I know there are、uh, several representatives from a world intellectual property organization. And we started to discuss about. The how the, what the intellectual property to be addressed on the internet space.、Uh, so, uh, because、um, digital, digital, digital information can be copied, 
and uh, it's exactly the same copy mm -hmm. we can generate. And then the multiple copies for everyone. So it very easily and uh, then instantly. So that impact uh, the, you know, kind of any copyrighted material to be mm. uh, in danger in a sense, right, uh, for the uh, things. So the not only, well, manga came later, but uh, then, you know, the music industry uh, woke up on that thing and uh, then the movie industry as well. And um, so uh, uh, various industries started to struggle with that kind of thing and the free copy uh, of the dig digitized, uh, uh, well, the intellectual properties uh, copyrighted material or intellectual, uh, the material with the copyrights. So uh, we have a long history to, to work on that. And uh, then the, uh, specifically with uh, uh, the uh, sources, I mean, people who got, uh, you know, kind of a rights to uh, the manga artists, of course, right, and the music artists, and uh, then in the movie, intellectual property, copyrighted uh, uh, the uh, movie and etc. So at the same time, then uh, uh, the industries of uh, those uh, uh, areas, including the publishing area, uh, they started to uh, think about how to uh, extend their business over the internet in a various ways. And so the uh, encrypted materials and the other things, I mean, other technology to support the, you know, the uh, subscription technology on a web standard. You know, those uh, technology has been provided to protect the uh, sources of uh, interactive property uh, contents. Uh, in a, in a, and uh, then, you know, so basically the important thing is uh, uh, the working together mm -hmm. type of a thing started that way. So um, it's always, uh, you know, kind of a crimes related thing, like a pilot is a mm -hmm. crime, right? And uh, then and also the technology support uh, to protect that uh, against the crime for the, you know, kind of uh, uh, owner of the intellectual property. Mm -hmm. So uh, that has been worked, sometimes good and sometimes uh, damaging mm -hmm. the existing industries mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a sense. But uh, then from a broader view of a history, then, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a very much a, uh, working together type of things has been very important. That's uh, also the uh, spirit of uh, IGF, uh, multi-stakeholder as well. Thank you very much for your insight. And in order to work together, uh, we should, we need to know the how piracy sites work. And uh, so the, let's move on to the next part, that part. Uh, <laughs> and uh, let's see how such, uh, I'm sorry, uh, okay, okay, uh, let's see how such piracy site work. Uh, this is a, only a rough picture of how they work. Uh, piracy site operators usually contract with hosting server at center uh, in located in different countries where data laws are relatively tolerant. And uh, operators uh, contract with relay servers too, uh, which is called content delivery networks or CDN, so that they can amplify their ability to accept users at low cost and at larger scale. Their income typically come from advertisement, uh, which is on the right hand. The piracy operators select and uh, combine uh, registrars, hosting servers, CDNs, advertising companies, or other uh, backend services. And as you will see on the next slide, Uh, some essential services, uh, 
these illegal sites use, like uh, registrars or uh, CDN services, uh, as you see, concentrated on one or a few companies that can be easily used anonymously and basically do not remove illegal content when notices are given. And there is another problem called domain hoppings, uh, which is repeated move with redirected domains during a short period of time. Uh, for example, uh, this, is, um, this is a real example, and uh, uh, a piracy site called A has changed its redirection 10 times to five different domains within three and a half months only. And when the domain is so rapidly changed, uh, the effort for countermeasures uh, must start over again. So let's see each such countermeasure and wars confronted a bit more closely. And the uh, first step of such measures is uh, sending direct removal notices to the uh, sites. Uh, one, pu one publisher, for example, uh, hires an anti-piracy company to uh, make approximately 250,000 removal uh, notices request monthly. Then next, uh, pursuing legal procedure. Uh, because that many of such uh, removal notices are ignored, or even if deleted, uh, posted again. So uh, next pursuing, uh, next we'll pursue legal procedures. Uh, since May 2020, we pursued legal procedures against approximately 50 piracy sites in the US only. And identified names and other information related to more than 10 personnel of interest. But it's difficult and time consuming to uncover their identities and servers often relocated before uncovered. Once we discover the identity information, then the request for a cooperation to foreign governments. But some countries often respond too late and too little. For example, uh, since October 2020, we offered in identity information and asked to make an investigation to certain country. Uh, actually, foreign government. Uh, through diplomatic channels and uh, held even regular meetings with the police department in charge. But so far, only one administrative penalty is charged in that region. Or requesting certain registrars, registries, and even ICANN to deal with malicious domain or domain hopping problems. In this regard, many communiques and public uh, comments have been made at ICANN. Also, the, we sent direct requests to registrars, but uh, no meaningful action has been taken by subject registrars so far. Or asking certain CDN services to delete illegal files and stop providing their services to obvious piracy sites. It's simply rejected. So a lawsuit is ongoing. Or another, another major thing we are doing is cooperating with internet and telecommunication industries, making effort to raise awareness. Actually, the situation is improving in Japan, but 
international awareness has not significantly improved in this regard. Or removing advertisement placement in order to cut their source of income. In Japan, advertisers and agency organizations and rights holders cooperated to establish a framework uh, to, for not placing ads on piracy sites. So the situation improved to some extent. But again, uh, outside advertisers, for example, non-members of any industry organization often do not cooperate. So there are still many, mainly adult-oriented adults on these piracy sites. Finally, uh, removing search results of actual names and domains of piracy sites and reducing their spread through SNS. Since 2021, we have removed 28 malicious massive piracy sites through cooperation with Google and the courts. So this is our current situation. Murai-san, yes. do you have any insight or comment on these efforts or even ideas? Yeah, actually, actually um, yeah, the um, the process uh, has been done in a, in a very, I mean, of course, I'm involved and uh, then you are involved and uh, then we've been working on uh, those uh, approaches. So, uh, uh, yeah, one of the approaches, uh, oh, by the way, the, you know, uh, maybe I should explain that uh, in Japan, uh, we've been working together for this issue uh, for a long time and uh, with the uh, 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 industry and the uh, uh, internet community, uh, in that internet industry actually, and uh, also uh, with the, uh, if needed, then the, you know we are uh, working and asking the government to move. Um, so uh, uh, when the uh, if, so so it's it's been you know, effective sometimes and the, uh, sometimes uh, not. Effective. I mean, the Fukuyama used the word rejected, but uh, then you know, there's some of the uh, industry in between the passing the data and the uh, caching the data, yeah. like a CDN, um, is a, a very difficult to identify that uh, by their their decision that, that this is good or bad. But uh, then you know, from the crime side end to end. And uh, then the pirates is a crime, and uh, so a uh, crime hunting type of a mechanism uh, could work. Uh, and uh, so uh, I think uh, you know uh, the Japan uh, have been, you know, utilizing uh, all those uh, possible ways in the past to uh, to fight against the piracy of uh, uh, manga, right? And uh, sometimes uh, effective in terms of uh, you know the international. Uh, like a, a, you know, the the police to police uh, relationship with a certain countries, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, talking about the ICANN, then the, you know, I when we started the ICANN process, then the you know, government agency is going to be uh, uh, one of the stakeholder called the government advisory board, and uh, then in Japan, our government. Uh, raised uh, this issue to the GAC, mm -hmm. Government Advisory Board, and then you know, um, uh, b being uh, listened to by the many government uh, representatives in that group, that, which is good. Mm -hmm. And uh, also uh, some of the um, issue remained that uh, the if, I mean question, can, can I can uh, impact the, the use of a domain name for the uh, mm -hmm. unwanted uh, purposes? And uh, it's a uh, very difficult for ICANN to, mm. I mean, because domain name is a uh, you know, huge uh, hierarchy things, and uh, ICANN just dealing with a top level domain, mm -hmm. and uh, therefore the uh, the in, in, entire internet infrastructure. Then uh, you know I can, there is a limited thing that uh, uh, ICANN itself can do. So so that is uh, that is a combination of uh, two things, right? I can work very effectively in terms of uh, sharing the issues with, with uh, you know, other government on this issue. And they, they 
properly discussed, and I'd like to thank the Japanese government uh, to work, has been working that way. And uh, then, you know, also the, I can discuss on this, but uh, then you know, there is a limited thing that I can do. Um, I, I can, I can, can do. I'm sorry, <laughs> not I can, I can do. Uh, and and uh, uh, one more thing to add is that, the, um, again, the, um, the piracy uh, impact need to be, you know, working with a very much a different part, uh, I mean, uh, uh, working together. So mm -hmm. uh, we need a legal expertise. Mm -hmm. And we, we need the international legal expertise. Mm -hmm. We need the crime thing. And uh, then also the internet service provider. So mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a reason why in Japan, in order to deal with this issue, then uh, you know, uh, we have a, uh, various places to discuss about that and the mm -hmm. exchanging mm -hmm. from the, you know, one of the examples is that uh, we are having uh, every three months, then the specifically for this subject, then the CEO of uh, internet service provider mm -hmm. and the CEO of a uh, publishing company mm -hmm. uh, having a breakfast together mm -hmm. to discuss about that periodically yeah, yeah. to be reported by uh, you know people like of course and that uh, what is the, what is the current status mm -hmm. of uh, this issue so so I think uh, you know uh, we are on the right process to work uh, against mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, so, Nicole san and Andy san and Hagio san, I'd like to ask your thoughts on uh, our feelings for such efforts against uh, uh, piracy sites and uh, or future of manga at large. So, first, uh, Andy san, could you start? Now, I'm sorry that Nicole san could you start? Yeah. Um, yes, thank you very much. I feel that that manga is one of the most important or one of the really precious treasures of Japan. It's becoming worldwide, but it's really something very, very special and that needs to be protected. I mean, in a way, you could say it's like any art form, ukiyo-e, that wasn't protected, or even sushi <laughs> that wasn't protected, and then you can see what's happened to it in the West now. But um, but if you have uh, manga now, can still be protected, and um, I think it should become um, a registered in some sort of way. But manga artists, editors, and publishers put their heart and soul into creating content for us to enjoy. You can see this with Hagiomoto Sensei and our editors. It's really, really time-consuming. And if we're not going to pay for that content, in a way it's like stealing their work. It's, it's pretty, it's, it's just something that we need to stop doing. And I think that we need to stop doing it. There's ways of stopping all these internet uh, providers, but it's in a way like drug use. You have to stop with the users. We have to stop using um, pirate sites and we need to work towards that. In 2025, I'm going to be curating a new manga exhibition in San Francisco at the de Young Museum. And I'm hoping you'll all support me in that. And what I'm hoping by 2025 is we'll see a shift mm -hmm. in, in, in manga piracy and we'll start to see um, that artists are getting being paid for properly uh, mm -hmm. for their work. I'm going to also address this topic in the exhibition as well. So I invite you all to come and see and hopefully there'll be a good solution by then. Thank you very much for your enthusiastic uh, the uh, opinions and uh, yeah, the, it, it will it be two thousand twenty four twenty five twenty five in San Francisco. Okay. April two. Okay. <laughs> so, every, yeah, I believe everybody will be there. And Andy San, uh, could you share your views on the countermeasures or the future of yes. the manga? Yeah. Yes, of course, and, and I'm very looking forward to that uh, exhibit in San Francisco because, uh, you know, being based in San Francisco. Um, so being part of the publishing industry, um, piracy has really kind of plagued us uh, for, for, for so long. And um, I'm never enthusiastic about public speaking, but uh, 
being part of this panel uh, was was actually a great experience because uh, just interacting with with all the panelists um, is so encouraging to me that there's so much work being done, um, so much research, so much expertise, uh, so, such great efforts happening. And I think, uh, as 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 um, others have said, um, it's not just um, the people here, but uh, also we. It, it'd be great if we could continue to get cooperation from from. Um, of the multiple industries involved in this. So it's very encouraging to me. Thank you very much. Uh, as a long time, the, the, uh, as a, uh, uh, from the Andy Sands uh, long ex experience in the publishing industry, the, the, uh, the last word is quite impressive for me too. And Hagio-san, uh, could you share your thoughts? Hi. Hi. Uh, so, 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 作家の音声でありがとうございますなら作品の最後に作るとかもしくはそのポイントを貯めれば何かの特権がもらえるとかまあ一つの提案ですけどねあの読み手の人にとってみれば体の作品を読んでもお支払いした作品を読んでも感動
or whatever. So that model is uh, becoming uh, pretty much successful mm. for the music industry these days, right? And uh, so uh, after the internet, and uh, then you know, uh, pretty much suffered by the internet, and uh, then you know, coming back to the very active uh, concert and the theater uh, type of thing. So I've been wondering how the manga is going to be. And the manga is, uh, if you like manga, if you understand manga, Manga is a combination of the author, artist, and uh, then editor. Mm -hmm. And they're working together for the paper printing art. There is a lot of uh, new things coming in with the digital format and the new format thing. But the printed manga is the origin of the art we are talking about this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Okay, if that is the case, then publishing companies should make a lot of efforts that uh, uh, inviting the people, I mean, digital, digitized printed manga is different of a digital, digital manga, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> the new, new format. Mm -hmm. So digitized manga is uh, basically the art of a printed manga. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, uh, so publishing companies should, I believe, uh, I, I'm asking, the publishing com company to work on the continued work with the, uh, the legend, the manga artist, and the also the young new coming mm -hmm. artist uh, for the format. This is a quite a, a format. I think uh, Nicole San and Andy San has been working, mm -hmm. and uh, outside the country also uh, the the you know kind of value of manga and that they love manga and the lovers of a manga around the world mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, that's what uh, they are working on so i really respect the uh, publishing companies uh respect i mean, I mean efforts uh, to extend mm -hmm. the value of the printed manga uh to be digitized and uh, then outreaching mm -hmm. uh, to the greater uh, community of uh, big fans of uh, manga. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, uh, preserving uh, the the uh, value of the uh, uh, what is uh, not easily substituted by digital copies uh, would be that something uh, was to be considered, was considering so. Uh, maybe there is a big hint uh, within the Murai-san's yeah, uh, yeah, points, and uh, yeah, please, Nicole-san. What I think Murai-sensei was saying was, is really very, very important. Um, paper, the paper copy, we, mm -hmm. we can read it in digital copies, but having the paper copy of manga is incredibly important, and I think it was a plea for this to continue, just looking at it from a museum perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, it's about the archival qualities of this material. Um, digital access changes. Uh, how you access digital um, content 10 years ago is different from how we access it today. Mm -hmm. So it, what will happen to manga 30 mm -hmm. years from now that we are having today? If we don't have it in paper, it may not survive. We just mm -hmm. don't know. But mm -hmm. paper is incredibly important. We just hope, mm -hmm. I think this was a plea for paper. <laughs> and um, and I, I would like to add my voice to that. Thank you very much. Andy san, do you have any thoughts or comments yes. on this? Yeah. Yes, that, that's actually um, pretty much exactly our strategy um, with our streaming services um, to kind of create a large funnel um, and attract readers, um, increase exposure of the manga, mm. and then kind of guide them to buy, to purchase uh, graphic novels, whether that be digital graphic novel or print. Um, and particularly in the United States, the print industry is, is, is still very strong. So um, yeah, that's, it's, it's exactly what our strategy is. Thank you very much. Okay, so is there, if there is no further comments, then let's take next uh, 20 minutes or something for Q&A sessions. Uh, 
Anybody with question or comments, uh, please stay in front of the microphone. Oh, <laughs> they are already doing that. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, uh, please try to keep your comments or questions short within, say, one minute, uh, uh, so that uh, many people can speak. So, yeah, first, be. I will try to be brief, it's not easy. I'm, I'm with Robert Toll, I'm known as one of the founders of the IGF, a pioneer of the Italian internet, but I'm really here speaking as a lifelong manga and anime fan, because when I was eight in television, I mm. saw Miraishon and Conan by Miyazaki Sensei, and that changed my life forever. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so I, I saw what the music industry, I saw the music industry doing the same meetings 20 years ago, and they failed. Mm. So I am afraid that you can, are doing the same mistake. The mistake that you have to be careful not to do is not to confound just the mm -hmm. pr straight priority. Like the people that really take like the like, last issue of One Piece and Kimetsu no Yaiba and put it online for money with what your fans are doing. You, many fans are doing piracy because it's the only way they can get access to manga, at least in the West, and maybe not in Japan. But in, in Italy, many manga are not available or are only available mm. many months later. I'm reading like uh, Arslan Senki comes up eight mm. months after the Japanese version. And mm. I wait for eight months, but many people don't want to wait for eight months. Why cannot you make it available in eight mm. weeks or in eight days? I think today with the technology mm. could be possible. Or there are like 15-year-old uh, kids that have, uh, I mean, uh, one manga of Tank mm -hmm. costs uh, 1,000 yen. If you're 15 years old, maybe you can buy mm -hmm. one per month, mm -hmm. but they want to read mm -hmm. 10, and mm -hmm. so they go to Manga Fox for the other mm -hmm. nine. But then maybe when they will be 20, they will have money and they will <laughs> buy more manga, so they will be your customers of the future. So don't be too hard on your fans. Mm -hmm. so go, go against the people that really steal the money, mm -hmm. but don't uh, think of your fans and think of ways you can mm -hmm. make, be nice to them and involve them and give them mm -hmm. cheap, readily available manga in their language mm -hmm. in timely manners. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, yeah, uh, take another question and then the uh, answer to the at once, so please. Th thanks. Um, so first, I, uh, just some clarifying question or comment here. Um, we saw a lot in the presentation about the countermeasure about mm. piracy, but what I didn't see is, mm. did you really try to understand why people um, try to access to pirate website? Because at the end, it showed mm. that there is a demand for that content. Mm -hmm. And I think for Japan, maybe need to learn about other experience because if we talk maybe more than manga about the cold Japan, about all the mm. artistic uh, content, you have mm. your neighbor in the, in the West that is succeeding. So maybe this mm. is a question also for uh, uh, here to think how to, to improve in, in that area. Um, finally, you talked about the artists and their royalty, mm. uh, royalty and so on, but um, I want mm. some clarification mm. because unfortunately in Japan mm. the mm. industry doesn't have a good reputation in terms of uh, working condition mm. for the artist and all who are, those who are involved. <laughs> so we, it's, mm. it's important to clarify how much they get mm. at the end because you created that uh, causality between the piracy and loss of revenue, but it seems it's more for the publisher. So if you can clarify more how the artists um, are earning and how you can improve their uh, condition, because at the end, those who are making uh, the monk and that content that people are looking for. Thanks. Thank you very much. And yeah, the sir, please. Yeah, okay, uh, Alexander Savnin, Pirates Parties International and Russian Pirate Party. I'm really sad hearing that uh, in this audience on international governance forums discussed well, chasing and punishing end users. Because talking about well, users distributing to each other uh, any content that's against freedom of information, is against the possibility of people to access it. After, uh, after, after you start going after users who sharing their own contents, maybe previously booked, you will start going after ones who creating fanfics or another stories or even parodies. Uh, parodies for something like this, and then you went into censorship systems, which might be used as political censorship also. I am said that I have to remind you that there is 21st article of Japanese constitutions, which, uh, which guarantees Japanese, system, uh, Japanese citizens freedom of distribution of information. Please 
try to distribute your information freely without blaming end users. Because again, so-called anti-piracy actions uh, could really start making censorship, economic censorship, uh, start chasing girls who are wearing goods which might be counterfeit and something like this. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. So, okay, so please. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Julia. I am a youth program delegate uh, from Brazil. And I am here to make a, a point about accessibility and also a reconsideration of some points exposed in the panel about the problematic regarding piracy. As other uh, software fellows have uh, introduced, piracy is uh, for us is a symptom of inequality rather than a problem of greed. So uh, y the strategies uh, presented were interesting, but they are probably they are considering the total excesses of the piracy consumer and as only as a matter of choosing free or paid. Many are not in the position to choose. Uh, I would like to reference Mr. Hag Mrs. Hagio mm -hmm. example. Uh, very good example and a very touching presentation about uh, why we should support the authors. But uh, for example, a, a thousand dollar camera in my country is worth mm -hmm. five months of the minimum wage in our country. So they are definitely not buying thousand dollar cameras, although many can buy thousand dollar mm -hmm. cameras. And then, then I'll make another point that there is much learn to learn from manga, and I'm very fortunate to meet Shigeru Mizuki lessons in Nonomba, though I only had access to it because I know English and I had a relative living in Europe at the time where they bought it in Europe, brought to me in English, and my peers don't know English, so they will never mm. meet this, uh, this issue because the, the, there is no possibility. We translate roughly 500 types of, uh, Brands of manga, uh, as mm. in like uh, Demon, uh, Demon Slayer and so on, One Piece, uh, roughly only fi 500 types of the brand, and they issue every year new, br new, new um, issues of the same manga. So we are not expanding mm. the translator market. And then mm. piracy comes in facilitating people doing the work for free. They are fans and they know Japanese. We have uh, a very verdant community, Japanese community in Brazil, mm. and they translate it for free. They publish, they, they, uh, publish online for free and we have access to it. So I have a collection of manga, which I only gathered through my life and my, uh, my new opportunities in jobs that I know that many of us can do. So there is passion in mm -hmm. translating the works for us mm -hmm. to access. Mm -hmm. There is uh, relevance and importance and uh, respect in trying to access such great content and such profound knowledge. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we have no options and we resort to it. So my question mm -hmm. is, is there a room to consider that piracy might not be exterminated, but solved in its whole complexity? Which actions are in place considering this problematic? Thank you. So, yes, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is José Artu. I am also part of the Brazilian Youth Delegation. And I love to learn about this exhibition oh, yeah. that was displayed at the museum, uh, as well commented by Nicole. And I would like to know if there are future plans to include our earnest actions about manga piracy in these exhibitions. Hmm. Okay, so, the, so we have already five questions and there are uh, three more. So uh, let's take this time to respond uh, the question and the comments so far. And so could you please a uh, uh, bit. So first there is a, the, Difficulty to obtain new uh, episodes. Uh, I think this is uh, for Andy San to answer first. 
Yes, um, if, if, I, if I may. Um, so I think we are making efforts to, uh, to uh, put out more content and, and with, with those streaming services that, that, that was on that the second slide that I had, um, different publishers are, are releasing more and more content. Um, and I, I probably should have explained it a little bit more in detail, but uh, um, for example, uh, Shonen Jump, um, the Shonen Jump service releases uh, chapters the same day they come out in Japan. Um, and we, we're doing as many series as we can right now. Currently we're doing every single series that, that comes out in the Shonen Jump magazine in Japan. Um, and uh, we release these chapters for free. Um, the three, three most recent chapters are free and then you pay a low price. Uh, it's it's two ninety nine a month in American dollars uh, for access to all the back chapters. So we are trying to address uh, putting out more content, making it easy access at a low price um, for more people to access. Um, and then the other publishers are also doing the same thing with their streaming services. Um, it's we you know it's not comprehensive but uh, we are making efforts. Thank you very much. And yeah, uh, does anyone? Yeah, Murai Sensei. Yeah, I, I, mm. I care about that gentleman <laughs> standing there. So uh, yeah, the, you, you, wanna, you wanna hear from mm. him or the, it's uh, too much? Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, so, I, all right, another round. All right, then, then you know, yeah, I just wanna take a, a kind of a two, two uh, kind of uh, technical and uh, uh, IGF type of a question. Uh, may I? Okay, so so the first one is the, yeah, thank you very much for the, you know, all the, uh, the questions. I, I think I think it's a, a very much, uh, you know, um, the reasonable question and the, then you know, also the, uh, some of the important uh, questions I need to address. The, uh, you know, the over, Pilot's action uh, is going to be, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, against the freedom of a speech type of a discussion and other thing, uh, which is uh, um, the and the, you know leading to a censorship and the over censorship maybe, and the, you know this is a very important and a serious uh, issue uh, always in a general uh, in the history of the internet uh, to address so. Uh, it's a, you know, we are one of the area, I mean, the multi-stakeholder type of a discussion. Uh, you know, when we started the ICANN, then ICANN uh, put the, you know, kind of government advisory board, but uh, then, you know, all the other stakeholders can be, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, starting the discussion equally. So, which is uh, very much, uh, you know, the uh, format to, to address those issues in a, uh, different stakeholders had a different voice and then listening to them. Uh, so IGF is uh, one of the, uh, the place to, to understand that one. So in that, in, well, anyway, the probably the balance of that kind of uh, uh, business uh, advantages on a certain area of uh, our industry and uh, also the uh, uh, listen to them is a very important, and then also the over uh, sen over sensor uh, ring situation uh, should be avoided for the you know kind of uh, more to the uh, uh, open uh, internet environment. So uh, that's probably a very important discussion, and uh, then applying to this area of a discussion. But uh, uh, probably uh, it, it's it's a, it's a, it's a you know a taken for the order process uh, in Japan for the manga piracy. Uh, the, another very interesting question from the lady uh, sitting in there was uh, accessibility uh, question. Mm -hmm. And then you know, it's a really important that uh, uh, the manga used to be the uh, late, in, I mean, comparing with the music industry, movie industry, other industry, then the you know, manga culture uh, value uh, was uh, kind of a uh, late to uh, start uh, addressing to the all over the world. So I remember uh, in the middle of uh, 2000, 
2013, then, uh, you know, I visited the French manga shop, and then uh, the, all the books in Europe is, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, opened up this way, and uh, then you know, suddenly the manga uh, is turned out to be a Japanese way, which is uh, different from, you know, open from the right. Uh, I was very much surprised that, uh, you know, kind of those European fans of a manga uh, accepting the basic culture things to um, address the manga, and uh, then I heard a story from the very, very, very famous soccer player from uh, Spain uh, that, that he was talking about the, you know, I started, he's a big, big legend uh, player. He said, he said I started the soccer from the reading a manga, but uh, oh, why the Japanese soccer player is an uh, old lefty? So that was a printed reverse <laughs> in the reverse world. But anyway, so that power uh, was uh, recognized quite recently. Therefore, the, um, a lot of things, technical uh, approaches happening for the accessibility of the manga, I believe. The manga is now the language layer and then you know, other uh, drawing layer is uh, separated in uh, many of the manga artists uh, are utilizing the digital uh, tools. And uh, then uh, so that the replacement and uh, then the multi-language uh, approach uh, would be uh, easier uh, for the things. And uh, then the one of the reasons why the pilot's gonna be uh, you know, kind of uh, are very much uh, extending uh, for the you know kind of outreaching was that the translation of the language uh, is has been uh, very expensive and uh, uh, not not could not be provided by from the origin of the manga publisher so uh, uh, <coughs> that is one of the example that uh, then you listen from uh, you know <coughs> the the two people from the outside the country that uh, you know uh, they are making a lot of uh, uh, efforts, and uh, then you know also the publishing company of J Japan is uh, working with them uh, to uh, address those uh, issues about accessibility for the world. So uh, uh, it, it's it's going to be a very important uh, uh, comment and the question. Thank you very much, and uh, then you know, probably continuous uh, uh, approaches to the uh, Japanese manga space going to be uh, very much beneficial. Oh, Rai-san, thank you very much. And one of such uh, uh, efforts includes uh, Manga Plus by Shueisha, where the uh, English, Spanish, Thai, Indonesian, or Portugal, or Russian, such a uh, language in uh, 190 countries uh, available and uh, uh, for one, two, three, episode one, two, three, uh, uh, available, uh, the, the latest, latest three episodes are available online for free. For free. Uh, and <laughs> it's just uh, uh, information from the uh, one publisher. And uh, there was also a question about royalty rates for the manga artists. And uh, I can say that typically it's a 10% of retail price. So. Uh, I think that uh, that's the uh, kind of standard here. And is there any other? If so, the, there is a gentleman standing there. So uh, could you please, uh, and you, you first, much. and then you, please, yeah. Thank you very much. My mm. name is Charles Chaban from the International Trademark Association. Uh, again, I'm here as a fan too. Uh, and of course, I was very happy to see this uh, uh, session from the beginning, in fact because uh, intellectual property is something important to know properly. And to be honest, I was a little bit uh, puzzled now from some of the uh, comments, but it's as uh, our father of the internet here, June, whom I met 20 years ago in ICANN, uh, <laughs> uh, mentioned that uh, it's good to hear for all the different views. So um, in fact, I think I blame ourselves as some of the people in the intellectual property field that copyright maybe is not known, but at the same time, copyright is, is something important and it has a, a version that it say that copyright is mainly, there is something called fair use. So when you say fair use, it's so when someone see it for his own benefit, for learning, so it's not against the knowledge. 
It's, it's part only to protect the owner of the, uh, of the copyrighted material, to be sure he gets his own royalty, as was mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, the publication, and make the knowledge even more important. And I, so it's just a comment, so I have no special question, just to thank you for what you've uh, done here, and to tell you that even in the 80s, I used to, uh, to attend many of these programs you showed, by the way, even the older one, I'm older here. So uh, even in the Arabic language in Jordan. So it's available before the internet even. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much. So please. Hello, I'll be quick, I promise. Uh, I'm Felp, I'm part of the Brazilian youth delegation here. And I'm also a Brazilian illustrator. Mm. So that panel is really important to me. Uh, my art since my childhood has always been very influenced by manga. And even on the other side of the world, the artistic power of manga influences many artists, other art, uh, artists like me. So, however, in my childhood, the possibility of purchasing manga was very restricted where I lived. So I read and was inspired by the few titles that I could physically access that time. So thinking us about this power of the manga artistic market, also being able to feed new artists, that will come from all over the world with the internet. Which ways of distributing manga online legally in Latin America do you envisage that at this time, when we have so much piracy in countries that often don't have platform, platforms to access them in a legal way, uh, that val values already established artists and enhances artists that are yet to come? Thank you very much. Okay, so, yeah, please. Um, hi. Well, my question is this. How much do you involve um, the youths in this fight against piracy? Because, you know, most of the pirates um, arise from our generation or maybe all the following ones. Mm. And I would think that if um, us, as in my generation, and the following ones would understand how much manga is important and um, might disappear as a cause, as a result of the mm. piracy, they will, be, they will stand up as the first you know, la army line against their fellow age group members and probably share the, new, the same technologies, as in there will be new technologies and everything. So how much are the youths and the coming generations involved in this fight? Thank you very much. And uh, as for the you, walk? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, thank you very much. As many of the youth uh, you know, participants on the IGF uh, raised the voice, and uh, which is good, and uh, then they uh, make make very short sure, um, things. And then I remember the software pirates uh, was mm -hmm. around, and then you know, all the uh, software users and the PC software users and game users, uh, they there there was a you know very much a use people use. You know, young people standing up, and then they you know, started to work on a you know, kind of a phrase that uh, you know we don't use or, uh, illegally copied uh, software type of a thing. And uh, so I, I believe that uh, you know if you visit the booth of a uh, publishing company about the pirates, manga pirates booth, I mean, then they, you know they have a very much uh, attractive uh, campaign uh, for the other people. Uh, including the young people, so uh, uh, I think uh, they're, 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 um, they would be, you know, kind of uh, uh, very um, powerful supporter about the, this uh, uh, movement. Thank you very much, Murai-san, and uh, it is what exactly I uh, try to say. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, again, thank you very much for valuable questions and the insights. And uh, so it's already 16.14, so we are now it seems that we are running out of time. Uh, there is also a uh, yeah, good question online, but uh, yes, uh, this is for another day. Uh, again, uh, thank you for joining us uh, for this session. and. Uh, uh, as Murai san said, please visit our booth at number two IGF uh, village. Uh, the arigato video is now on being shown. 
uh, and manga written by 16 artists handed out. Uh, it is in English. And uh, yeah, finally, uh, give speakers and staffs a warm hand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.